first reading today is from Lamentations 3, 22 through 32. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, and therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there that may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and to be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For the reading of the gospel from Matthew, the 25th chapter. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to eat, something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? And did not take care of you. Then he will answer them. Truly I tell you. Just as you did not do it for one of the least of these. You did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment. But the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. I want you to take just a moment, and think of all the things that are worrying you today. Just take a moment and think of those things. What came to mind? I was at the AAA store trying to find a new wallet. I'd lost mine was waiting for my number to change in the driver's license that, where you can get your driver's license there in St. Louis Park. And the, ca the cash registers were down. The computer wasn't working. You should have seen some of the people. You wouldn't believe that how this one possibility for purchase destroyed their day. And I said, I'm sure glad we're not in Ukraine. And a woman looked at me and she said, absolutely. I pray for them every day. For us to remember the fullness of life when we can get caught up in the minutia. But that is not the case with our reading from Lamentations. This is the third of our three-week series asking the question, is your life different because of your faith? We have two very different readings that illustrate the impact faith has in living out our future. Both 
of these readings have climactic events happening in their time. Walter C. Bruzard, Professor Emeritus, Religion and Philosophy at Warburg College, in his commentary on Lamentations, writes that this portion of reading that we have today, at first blush it appears that the assigned text is a bold declaration of faith and hope in the midst of unrelenting lamentation over the horrific events surrounding the siege and the destruction of Jerusalem. In the midst of all of this, we hear the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Lamentations is a silly of, a series of dirges and laments following the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 B.C. Lamentations attempts to put into words the heartache and the despair of the prophet Jeremiah who had survived the siege of Jerusalem and subsequent captivity at the hands of Babylon. If Jeremiah's first book, named after himself Jeremiah, was the prophetic warning and anticipating the fall of Jerusalem, its sequel, Lamentations, was Jeremiah's reflection upon it. For obvious reasons, Lamentations is one of the sadder books of the Old Testament, which in the words of Dilbert Hillers states, served the survivors of the catastrophe as an expression of the almost inexpressible horror and grief that they felt. During Jeremiah's 40-year ministry, he had preached seemingly futile messages of repentance to a stubborn people, seemingly destined for destruction, mocked, ostracized, imprisoned, beaten, isolated, and ignored. Jeremiah's ministry bore little to no fruit, at least on the surface. God, however, had called Jeremiah for such a time. The expressions of hope and other pious sentiments that appear in these verses of 22 through 30, of 20, 22 through 32, represents the poet's desperate rhetorical strategy to coerce a response from God to move and save on the former grounds of God's own faithful character and the latter based on wisdom's general confidence in God's manage, management of the world. That God is not so moved to act remains a problem for the poet and the preacher. The brave words of faith soon dissolve into a lament. The poem and the book end with divine silence. The poet is left without answers, without a divine response, as often as we are. What do we do and how do we carry on in faith when platitudes ring hollow? or when they taste like ashes in our mouths when we utter them. How different, after all, is the assertion of some divine, albeit unknowable, plan in the face of tragedy? How do we persist in faith when pain continues unabated and when God does not answer and we are seemingly left alone? The poet is, in a way, trying to convince himself Although God causes grief, God will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. Our Matthew reading reverses the, the lament. This parable reading follows a long series of six parables and warnings about living responsibly that in Jesus we have an alternative to this worldly demonic kingdom. For Matthew, the parable of the sheep and the goats illustrates the principle of love and mercy that becomes the criteria for judgment. This is the only scene with any details picturing the last judgment in the New Testament, in the Gospels. To the reader's surprise, ancient and modern, the criterion for judgment is not a confession of faith in Christ. Nothing is said about grace justification or the forgiveness of sins. What counts is whether one has acted with loving care for the people in need. Such deeds are not a matter of extra credit, but constitutes the verdict of judgment. Jesus has taught that self-giving care for others is the heart of the revealed will of God. The messianic king has lived out his teaching that his kingdom consists of service to others. 
It is for all nations. It is for the least of these. No, this is not about individual beings. Uh, excuse me, this is about individual beings and not nations as corporate political structures. The aim is pastoral care and encouragement for all people, especially those that our society dismisses, neglects, or choose to not even notice. Both the sheep and the goat ask, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, and in prison? But it's the goats that don't see God in the people that they encounter. The sheep see the least of these and care for them without seeking reward or recognition. In the fullness of the scripture, of course, we proclaim a God who knows the anguish that inspires lamentation. This God has suffered and taken death into God's own life. Moreover, we know through the resurrection of Christ that life, not lament, is God's answer for our disappointment, pain, and despair. But that is not yet. We do not yet experience the joy of resurrection. We have only its promise. We have faith, not certitude. We lament at the condition of the world crying out against the enveloping darkness. We throw up our hands in anguish, wondering, where is God? But if we're silent and listen intently, we might hear God asking, where are my people? That people are not so moved to act remains a problem for God and for all of us. The prophet Jeremiah, the author of Lamentations, declared, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. We can continue the lament, pleading for God to change the world. We can be like the goats and not notice the needs of others. Or we can be the sheep of the good shepherd. We can be people who do acts of kindness without determining if someone is worthy. For we are called to see the least of these to see each and every person in the image of God and in turn live lives of joy offering a glimpse of Easter dawn. What Jeremiah in his laments would love to hear is each person declare the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. And they are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. And that was confirmed as I was driving into worship today. I always listen to the news just before I come in to see if there's anything that will change the message. But this only strengthened it. The tornadoes that ravaged the south. They interviewed a man and he said, God, and I was ready for him to complain about why did this happen. And his response was, he saved my family and me from this destruction. May we see the goodness of the Lord. We do have our opportunities and reasons to lament but this is not the end. It is not finished. Come and hear the story in the week ahead. Know this God who gave his life from the least of these to all people in all nations for all time. In this, I praise the Lord.
In Jesus' name, amen.